night in the sky you cannot see a butterfly look through the window realize all you see is for you and i in your dreams through the nights every moment that passes by look to the heavens hands spread wide thanking allah the most high there is no god but allah muhammad is his messenger Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of New Muslim Guide, the guide for the new Muslims, a special program designed for new Muslims and for born Muslims also to benefit. Perhaps they could share this knowledge with new Muslims and be reminded as well. Um, we talked about several topics that are relevant to the uh, new Muslims' daily life. Uh, Amongst them are clothing from the Islamic perspective. That is one of the uh, last topics we covered. And inshallah, we do have uh, four more episodes to go. This is episode 12 out of 15. So uh, we hope you could uh, benefit from this inshallah and apply it to your daily lives. In this episode, we're going to talk about marriage in Islam, being a new Muslim, how it is to be uh, married, uh, and the conditions of marriage, the rights uh, for the husband, the rights uh, of the husband and the wife. Also, how to inform my family about my conversion, which is a challenge many new Muslims face. How to inform my wife that I converted to Islam. Uh, sometimes it is difficult. Sometimes the wife threatens the husband after she finds out that her husband became a Muslim. She threatens him and she's like, if you do not come back to uh, Christianity or whatever, um, I'm going to divorce you. So there are strategies and ways to have this resolved inshallah and uh, with uh, our brother Sam we'll be, be able to uh, talk this through and perhaps we could uh, benefit from him as well. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you Sam? Uh, I'm very happy, thank you. Alhamdulillah. Thanks for joining us in this episode and all the previous episodes. Thank you, Ryan. I'm we glad ask to be Allah here. to bless you and to preserve you, to protect you and your family. Um, when we talk about uh, family, you and your spouse, let's focus on the uh, spouse now. Um, I mean, you came to Islam. Uh, your wife didn't convert to Islam. So there is somewhat of a barrier. Um, you following a belief, she's following another belief. Um, how was it, I mean, when you came to Islam? It was difficult to share with my family that I had converted to Islam. I didn't know what they were going to think. At first, I think they were embarrassed. At first, I think they were very concerned for my spiritual welfare, that I jumped off the uh, diving board into some sort of other mm -hmm. religious belief. Yeah. But over a year or two, I began to explain to them what was Islam? Mm -hmm. Over a year or two after converting to Islam? Yes. So gradually, you took your time? Gradually, as we met, uh, I would share with them about my life. I would share with them about uh, my feelings, what I observed. I would share with them about the, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I would let them know about the things that are common between Islam and Christianity. Yeah. So um, they were surprised to hear this. They were surprised to hear that the virgin about the Virgin Mary and the virgin birth of mm -hmm. Jesus. There's it's a all complete the chapter about Mary, right? Surah Maryam. Two. Uh, mm -hmm. Imran. The, Imran about the family of Mary and then Maryam. Mm -hmm. So these are two of the longest chapters in the Quran. Yeah. So <laughs> Alhamdulillah. But you know, more important than my talking was their observing. Mm -hmm. And my wife would be glad to tell you today that I'm a better husband as a Muslim than I was as a Christian. Alhamdulillah. I take great care of her. I look after her. I watch after her. My friends in the mosque in, the, in Jeddah always asking me, are you taking care of your family? Mm -hmm. How is your family? See, this is very important in Islam, the family. Yeah. And now my wife would be glad to say she loves me very much and I love her. Mm -hmm. My daughter the same. She thinks I'm a better father 
as a Muslim than I was as a Christian. Okay, so they don't think that you fell into some kind of terrorist religion no. and uh, are brainwashed and all no, that. No, no. Uh, so what was the reaction? You, you, were, you were scared at the beginning to inform them. Yes. Um, you uh, withheld for a year or two just to take your time to gain the knowledge and they everything. They suspected. They would ask me, because I was attending mosque and I would send photographs of the mosque. My wife and daughter are living in Slovakia. They're not with me. And they wanted to know what's going on in Saudi Arabia. They wanted to know about my life. So I started a blog explaining what I was seeing and experiencing in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And uh, they enjoyed that, but they were concerned. Then I start talking about the commonalities between Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And they were shocked and amazed at what is common. Yeah. So I think in the beginning we need to emphasize what is common. Mm -hmm. But we're not totally alien to Christianity. Mm -hmm. uh, Islam uh, embraces the prophet Isa. It's impossible to be a Muslim without loving Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I love him more now as a Muslim than I did as a Christian. Yes. Okay. These are good points you mentioned. And I'm sure a lot of the new Muslims are struggling with this, you know. Mm -hmm. How am I going to tell my spouse? How am I going to inform my wife or a wife? How am I going to inform my husband? What's the reaction going to be? Uh, all these years of marriage, suddenly they moved to a Muslim country. Uh, they saw that Islam is something else. They reverted to Islam and uh, they have to break the news to their uh, family. It's not easy, you know. But uh, mashallah, you were able to uh, cope with it and uh, you overcame that. So the reaction was uh, a little bit negative in the beginning. Then uh, when you took it gradually, step by step, uh, sharing pictures, uh, talking about the common terms between the religions, uh, this uh, helped them digest it easily. Uh, so how long did it take for them to digest? Probably three years. Um, and going on three years now, mm -hmm. but you know, our relationship is very strong okay. in marriage. Our relationship is very strong, uh, father, daughter, mm -hmm. and uh, they respect me. My father, my daughter took me to her church to speak to a group of, of uh, Catholics, mm -hmm. and uh, she arranged the meeting. She's very proud of me as a Muslim. She's very proud to introduce me. My daughter is reading Quran now. Okay. And uh, she's buying books about Islam, the history of Islam. Uh, books about the uh, positive books about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. She's reading these things because she wants to know about her dad. Yeah. But uh, inshallah, someday. So a revert, also embrace Islam. Uh, a revert w should not uh, feel uh, so much anxiety towards this. Uh, 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 you know, this uh, part of his life where he has to inform his family. What kind of advice could you give a revert? I would say to people who are watching, um, your personal example, your personal behavior is much more important uh, than what you say. So take care of your family, love your family, continue to love them and care for them, and show it in the way you behave. Mm -hmm. Okay. And at the same time, convey the messages, but gradually. Gradually. Right? There's no compulsion in religion. No compulsion. Quran says this. Mm -hmm. La ikraha fi din. No compulsion in religion. Um, wonderful. All right. Because uh, I remember uh, in the Islamic Education Foundation, uh, last year, uh, we went and uh, we went, visited a company and uh, conveyed the teachings of Islam to uh, a person. And he accepted it, you know, he accepted it with all his will. He loved Islam. It seemed as though he wanted to become Muslim for years. Uh, but when we sat with him, you know, he felt that his chest was open to it. He was ready for that. Uh, after he converted to Islam, he gave me a call like two days later. Um, saying that his wife gave him a, a difficult time. Um, once he broke the news to her, she started like screaming and, uh, you know, hitting him. And then she told him, I have cancer, but I hid it from you. I hid this news from you. So when he told this to me, I was like, um, calm down, relax. Uh, if she hits you, don't hit her back because Absolutely. Islam does not teach, uh, you know, uh, violence or aggressiveness in any way. So just be very calm and break the news to her, uh, you know, in a, in a mild way. Um, when he told me that she broke news to him that she had cancer and she didn't tell, it, tell him until 
that moment. Um, the first thing that came to my mind was that, you know, she's playing a game to get him to shift his focus from Islam to uh, her problem. And uh, a day or two later, that is exactly what it turned out to be. He told me that, you know, she didn't really have cancer. She only reacted that way uh, out of anger to uh, get him to shift his focus. So we may face uh, some difficulties with some wives, <laughs> especially if they're pretty violent. Um, but we should still be calm and, uh, and convey the messages in the right way. And what you did was good. You waited. You, know? you didn't immediately rush to your family and say, hey, I converted to Islam today. You took your time, right? Yes. And I let them know that I'm not anti-Christian. I'm not anti-Jewish. I am uh, Muslim, but I have respect for other people and others respect for what they believe. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he did the same. Uh, in the Charter of Medina, the Constitution of Medina, he dictated terms of human rights. It's one of the oldest human rights records, uh, human rights documents on record, and dictated by the Prophet, and it guaranteed freedom for, of faith for other beliefs. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, people should not feel threatened by Islam, even yeah. within a family or a marriage. Uh, I would never threaten my wife. I, there's no compulsion in religion. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, okay, so that's for a person, a, a, a male especially, who reverted to Islam and has to break the news uh, to his wife. Um, Insha'Allah, we uh, did extract something from this. Now we want to talk about other issues that uh, a person, an unmarried uh, person, uh, male or female, uh, should find uh, in a woman. And uh, we also want to talk about the permissibility or impermissibility of, uh, for a male convert to marry a Christian. Uh, so the question is, is it permissible for a new Muslim to marry a Christian woman? So uh, I would say yes. Mm -hmm. It is a yes. Uh, we did research on this matter and we found that the scholars said it is okay if she is from the people of the book, if she is a Christian a, or a Jew. People of the book were allowed to get married to them. Uh, the only females we're not allowed to get married to are the uh, polytheists, those who you know worship more than one God or believe in the existence of more than one God. However, it is permissible for a male to get married to a, a Christian a female if he recently reverted to Islam. Now, we're going to talk more about this, inshallah, but we're going to have to take a break, and uh, we'll be back to get into more detail about this and some other issues in regards to conditions of uh, marriage and rights of a wife and a husband as well. Mm. Thank you. There is no God but Allah Muhammad is his messenger Huda TV's social media sites are the best way to contact us from anywhere around the world. Stay connected with Huda TV's latest news and programs through Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Skype, and Instagram. It's fast and easy. Stay up to date with your favorite shows and scholars today. Huda TV. A light in every home. Hoda TV is committed to helping others. So why not help Hoda TV share the message of Islam worldwide? Take part in helping spread the authentic message of Islam based on the Quran and the Sunnah throughout the world by sponsoring Hoda TV. Don't miss this unique opportunity to gain the reward from Allah. There is no God but Allah, Muhammad is his messenger. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, welcome back. Um, in this episode, we uh, did cover uh, how to break the news to your spouse uh, if you are a recent revert, um, one who just came to Islam. Uh, you may find difficulties with, uh, you know, sharing this message with your wife and... Uh, 
Alhamdulillah, we did learn how to overcome that. Now we want to talk a little bit more about uh, the permissibility uh, for a male revert to marry a Christian. We said it's permissible for a male uh, Muslim to marry a Christian, uh, a uh, Jew, any people of the book, anybody from of the people of the book. The people of the book are the Christians and the Jews. Uh, and we know that the polytheists are not the people of the book. They are those who worship more than one God or worship more than one God. We're not allowed to marry them. Uh, we are allowed to marry a Christian or a Jew. However, it is uh, better to marry a Muslim because you'll share the same exact beliefs. Uh, on the other hand, if you're already married to a Christian, and then you revert it to Islam. Uh, it is recommended to continue your marriage. Mm -hmm. You don't have to renew your contract or anything. Uh, you just continue and carry on. And uh, share the message of Islam with the wife whenever you feel that you're comfortable with the teachings of Islam. And uh, whenever you feel that you have the correct knowledge. Yeah, I found that uh, it's very easy for me to speak with my wife now about Islam and about my faith because um, you know I, I moved into this gradually with her over a period of three years she's very open to me she wants to know about my life she wants to know about Islam there I have many many questions from my daughter and my wife and I'm very happy just to patiently provide information to them and uh, my daughter's reading Quran from time to time. She's, she she uh, is studying the life of the Prophet. And as I mentioned, she went out and bought books on her own mm -hmm. about the history of Islam. Very positive books, not angry books. Okay. So I'm very grateful for so what God is doing in their lives. They have respect for me. They appreciate me. And uh, they're not uh, condemning of me. Mm -hmm. They're not hostile to you or anything. Not at all. And they're doing their research. Your yes. daughter is doing the research, buying books from her own, without you even requesting her to buy those books. Yes. Alhamdulillah, these are good signs, you yeah. know. Uh, Insha'Allah, we hope that Allah guides uh, your wife and your daughter to the best belief so that they could enter paradise mm -hmm. for eternity. Ameen. Um, uh, sh okay, a woman converted to Islam, but her husband didn't. What should she do? I'm going to give you the answer. But first, I want to hear a comment from you. A woman converted to Islam, her husband did not. What should she do? I think she needs to carry on as the wife and be patient. Uh, she doesn't need to uh, share information to the extent that, look, I'm a Muslim now. You have to accept this. No. She continues to love her husband. She continues to serve her husband. And... Uh, he, sh he should see a better wife than he did before. Mm -hmm. So this is um, submission to Allah is also submission to your husband. Okay, so we see the opinion of scholars is, uh, is somewhat similar, uh, except that there is a uh, slight difference, and that is when a woman uh, reverts to Islam uh, and her husband does not, she has a waiting period. This is called iddah which is about uh, four months and a few days. In this period, she is not allowed to have sexual intercourse with him. Um, in this period, he has the opportunity to convert to Islam as well. So this is a license from Allah. Allah, out of His mercy, He gives the husband a chance, like four months and a few days, to convert to Islam as well. If he does not, then the husband is no longer allowed to uh, continue on with his wife. And she is allowed to get married to a Muslim man. This is uh, supported by evidences from the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad. And it is a consensus of uh, different scholars who came up with this uh, opinion. And that is that, you know, she has a waiting period. She could convey the message of Islam to him. She could convince him. And if it doesn't work after this waiting period, she has to convince him to uh, divorce her or request divorce papers. And she is allowed to uh, get married to another Muslim without his consent, whether he divorces her 
or not. She is in another country. Uh, she is allowed to get married to a Muslim man, and that is for her own benefit. You see, when it's vice versa, when a man converts to Islam and a woman doesn't, the man is, you know, the man is known to be stronger. He is more influential than the woman, and he is a decision maker. You know, whatever he wants to be implemented is going to be implemented. The woman is uh, more emotional, and she's going to follow the her husband. He'll take the lead, and she'll follow him. So with the man, it's different. You know, if the woman does not convert to Islam. It's okay. Allah lets it, you know, continue. That marriage is good. It's valid if she is from the people of the book. But when it's the opposite, when a woman converts to Islam and the man does not, the man may influence her to reconvert back to the previous religion. He may beat her. Uh, he may uh, harm her. He may hurt her and get her to revert back to that religion. So Allah wants to protect this uh, new Muslim, the female. So He gives her a chance. Uh, he gives the husband a chance to revert to Islam. Few months doesn't work out. Then they have to separate, and she is allowed to get married to a Muslim man. Did you ever know this? I didn't know this. I haven't heard of this. How does that compare with the comment in uh, in the Quran that I hear very often? There's no compulsion in religion. No compulsion in religion, but uh, this may uh, affect her negatively. There's no compulsion. We're not forcing him to come to Islam. Uh, she requests him to come to Islam. She conveys the message. This reminds me of a story just a few days ago before I came here. Um, a man came to our office wanting to convert to Islam. And we asked him, why do you want to convert to Islam? He said, um, my wife converted two days ago. And ever since she converted, I was unable to sleep. You know, I'm trying to sleep, but I can't. And all of a sudden, I have this deep love for Islam. I don't know where it came from. You know, I started hanging up Allah's name on the wall. And I just have love for the Muslims. And her conversion to Islam really influenced me. And he was speaking from his heart, you know. Mm -hmm. You could see that he was really there because he wants to convert to Islam. And he did. We taught him the basics of Islam. He converted to Islam, alhamdulillah. They continued on with their marriage. So what we want to take out from this point is that when Allah wants good for a couple, He allows the husband to convert to Islam. This all happens in Allah's hands, right? It is all up to Allah. If Allah allows it to happen, it's going to happen. The woman converted to Islam. Allah didn't want them to separate. So Allah didn't allow this person to sleep for two days. And He gave them deep love for Islam. Two days later, this person converted to Islam. And we often hear stories like this. So there is no compulsion in religion. We're not forcing the man to convert to Islam. It's up to him. Uh, but if he wants to continue with his wife, he must convert to Islam. Otherwise, he, uh, she is no longer his wife. So there are two different points, the compulsion of religion and the permissibility of these two spouses being together. Uh, carrying on, we'll talk about conditions for a new wife. We're moving into another topic, and that is conditions for a, a new wife. What are some conditions you would uh, look for if you were searching for a new wife, if you were you know, a recent convert and you want to come to, uh, you want to get married again? Um, I'm often asked in Saudi Arabia if I want a second wife <laughs> and my response to that is one wife is enough for me. I love my first wife very much. She's the love of my life. I would never consider marrying anyone else. So uh, I can understand when others would, would um, I, I have Saudi friends who have two wives, three wives. But they can afford it, two houses, three houses. But um, Yana is the love of my life. I can't imagine being married to anyone else. Good. So um, you would stay with one wife, alhamdulillah, and you would continue on with her. That's good. And especially that your wife is, you know, she's good to you. She's treating you with kindness. Um, you have no reason to search for another wife. Uh, let's assume that a person recently reverted to Islam uh, and he wants to search for a wife. He's not married. He's a youngster. He's about 20 years old, 21 years old or something. He recently converted to Islam. He needs a wife so that he could be safe 
from fornication and adultery. What are the conditions he should be searching for in that wife? Let me share with you, and you can give me a comment with each condition. Number one, the wife must be a Muslim, Jewish, or Christian, believing in her religion. So she must be a Muslim, not by name, but a follower, a Christian, not by name, but a follower, or a Jew, not by name, but a follower. She must be believing in her religion. That's the first condition. Yeah. This means a devout respect for the, the person of God, Allah, and a willingness to search for Allah with all her heart, with all her mind. You know, my wife is a Christian. We have the habit, a custom, not a habit, a custom. We've always prayed before the meals. We continue to do that now. She's Christian, I'm Muslim, but I lead in prayer. Uh, this is a Western tradition, but when I pray to Allah uh, now to thank Him for all that He's given us, including thanking Him for my wife and my daughter, it draws them closer, draws us closer together. We have a saying in the West, the family that prays together stays together. And I think it's very important that uh, religion or faith be a central primary concern in finding a new wife, someone who's dedicated uh, to their faith. Mm -hmm. Okay, good comment we received on that. So um, the first condition is wife must be Muslim, Jewish, Christian, believing in her religion. You, after you reverted to Islam, you remained with your wife. She's a Christian follower. Uh, before you eat, you lead the prayer. You say, in the name of Allah or in the name of uh, God, but meaning Allah. And you carry on with a prayer, thanking Allah for what He gave you and what He blessed you with. Yes. And uh, inshallah, the both of you uh, continue to be ha happily every, ever after, as they say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Inshallah. Inshallah. There is a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, on the first condition, that is uh, that the Prophet instructed us, marry a devout Muslim woman and you will prosper. Um, so the priority for this man, the 21-year-old or 30-year-old or whatever his age is, who never got married, if he were to choose between a Muslim or a non-Muslim, he should choose a Muslim mm -hmm. so that he could pray with her. You know, they could both pray to Allah instead of him praying to Allah and her praying to uh, Jesus. They both pray to the Almighty Allah. They wake up for Fajr together. He wakes her up. She wakes him up. It would be nice, right? So this is what the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, instructed us to do. The second condition is she must be a chaste woman as it is forbidden to marry one known for lewdness. You know, she must have modesty, she must, be, uh, she must have a good character because it is uh, impermissible for one to be known for lewdness. Another one, um, she must not be his uh, mahram, she must not be his sister, his daughter, his aunt, uh, his close relative that he's not allowed to get married to. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fourth one is that she must not marry, uh, he must not marry two sisters at the same time. He shouldn't, you know, he, he, uh, marry two sisters from the same family at the same time. That's impermissible in Islam. Um, we're getting close to the conclusion. We're going to have to wrap this up. So conditions for a new husband for the wife. Let's say a woman recently reverted to Islam and she wants to search for a husband. Her conditions, the condi conditions for a husband are only two, whereas the conditions for a new wife are four. Conditions for a new husband, the first one is the adherence uh, to Islam. He must be, you know, well adhered to Islam, a follower of the Islamic belief. Number two, good character. He must have good character, not an aggressive person who beats his wives or uh, her beats his wife or, you know, is very hostile, etc., etc. Let's uh, conclude with this and um, inshallah in the next episode we could talk more about some details in regards to this and we will get into some other very important subjects. Thank you, Brother Sam, for joining me in this episode. I ask Allah to bless you and to have mercy on you and thank you audience for watching this episode we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and have mercy on you and to allow us to enter paradise with no account until next time inshallah this is your brother Rayyan Arab wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh dark night in the sky you cannot see a butterfly look through the window read
realize all you see is for you and I in your dreams through the nights every moment that passes by look to the heavens hands spread wide thanking Allah the most high there is no God but Allah Muhammad is his messenger there is no God but Allah Muhammad is his messenger